You're watching The Chaos Protocol on Transplanar RPG, an all-transgender, people-of-color-led, dark fantasy TTRPG show set in an original, non-colonial, anti-orientalist multiverse. If you like what you see, please consider pledging to our Patreon to support the show and get access to a patron-only after-show, early podcast episodes, GM notes, character sheets, and even the chance for your tabletop OC to cameo in our series. Thank you so much for watching, and enjoy! The Chaos Protocol is a dark fantasy series that may contain content that is triggering for some viewers. Content warnings for this episode include complex and complicated relationships, death of loved ones, body horror, aging, monsters and monstrosity, hunger, fantasy violence, and references to infidelity, grief, and trauma. Arc 2, Episode 13, The Tiger Stalks, from Carved Inside an Empty Urn by Connie Chong. As night descends upon the city of heaven, Xiao Cheng makes their way to the rendezvous point they'd agreed upon with those three interesting cultivators. They flit past the gates of four directions, past streets of jade and opal, courtyards blossoming with magical fruits going to seed, rolling hills now empty of divine beasts, imperial plazas as rich as smoke and light and fragrant as tea, and they enter the hall of peerless destiny. As they step past its amethyst pillars, Xiao Cheng half expects the emperor to fold into existence upon that throne of bright red sandalwood, but she doesn't. Ever since the vanishing, she hasn't. Xiao Cheng approaches the empty throne in this empty hall, feeling rather empty themselves. They glide across the amethyst pool, and they sit not atop the throne, but at the base of it. And they wait. Through the windows, carved from dark timber, mounted high in the castle walls, Xiao Cheng watches the sun set. Handsome rays of daylight fade and darken until night arrives, and with it, the mist. It thickens, rolling into the hall like fog across the surface of the black river. It obscures the paltry light of the waning moon. Xiao Cheng is used to this. The mist has rolled in after the sun sets for ages and ages and ages. It is a fixture of the city of heaven as much as the gods are. And so they wait. And wait. And wait. And wait and wait, an hour passes, maybe two, and then there is a noise, and Xiao Cheng stands, but it's just Goose, flapping his wings annoyedly, waddling across the threshold of the grand hall, oh, and Xiao Cheng sits back down with a deep and unrelenting sigh. Ah, oh, Lord, Swirling into existence next to Brother Goose and Hun Xiaocheng is none other than the Oracle. Of course, from Xiaocheng's perspective, it is a perfectly spherical, floating orange, complete with a stem and a tiny little green leaf. And the courtier of four symbols startles. Just Hey oh! Uh, uh, Tiana! Oh, 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 sorry. I don't understand the tongue of gods, which is very interesting because I understand everything. You know, how is that possible? Uh, oh, uh, I see. I'm not sure exactly, little orange. I'm sorry, what? What are you exactly? An awakened heavenly fruit, perhaps? And how did you get here? The gates are sealed and all the gods are gone except, well, me. I'm with those agents. Uh, uh, the cultivators who came here because they heard you praying. The agents that stood you up and abandoned me? Uh, abandoned you? Yes, I'm 
very lonely and upset. I was helping Strike Team Nova poke around in the Black River, and Zynan stepped into the ghost world or whatever, and Sayer had one of his scary visions, and then we went into a gambling house and found some blackmail, and Lumira looked into an evil bowl, and everyone got really, really scared, and then the mist got super sick, and then they were gone! They abandoned me! And Goose. Uh, but honestly, Goose kind of left before all of that happened. I don't even think they realized he waddled off. I... see... So this Strike Team Nova is what your cultivator friends call themselves? Yes! Yes, indeed! Yes, indeed it is! We are rank number 42 at Trans. Wait, no, um, 40 now. Because technically we did complete our mission in the Wild Sea even though Sing died. And we gained another rank because everyone felt bad for us, I think. Fascinating. Can you tell me more about this... This trans you speak of. Uh, maybe if you tell me what you know, I can help you find your friends again. Really? Okay. Well, you know what? You better strap in, Mixed Twin, because I'm going to tell you every single thing I know about Strike Team Nova and the Trans Plano Wayification and Nourishment Syndicate. Please do. We have all the time in the world. And the Oracle tells Xiao Chang. Everything. It takes hours. Couple of breaks, follow up questions, a lot of follow up questions. Brother Goose falls asleep, wakes up, falls asleep again. And by the time the sun begins to rise and the mist begins to disperse, the oracle is just about done. And then they got their second Mayday mission from Artemis and. Oh! Artemis, that's the patron saint of mortals, right? One of the hands of fate? Yes! Keep up! Oh my god! Anyway, they got their second Mayday mission from Artemis, and then it was time to come here because it was a summons to help you. Actually, verbatim, Artemis said, <clears throat> Your Mayday call comes from a god known as Wind Xiao Chong. Smolder, smolder. It simply reads, Help! Fascinating. You've been saying that a lot. Fascinating. Might I suggest some synonyms to expand your vocabulary? Such as enchanting, captivating, enthralling, bewitching, beguiling. And that's when Strike Team Nova reappears. Nova. You blink. And the mist is gone. The monsters are gone. The gods are gone. The bedlam and panic are gone. But your hearts are still pounding. As soon as you reappear, Quin Xiaochong leaps to their feet, Goose honks, the oracle vanishes with a pop, and Lumira, you let out a hair-splitting scream. The gold is creeping up your hand like veins of molten sunlight. As it progresses down your skin, you can feel your atoms decaying. From the inside out, time rapidly transmuting forwards to achieve cellular necrosis. The age pressing against your features unwinds, wrinkles smooth out from your eyes, your hollows become, become less sunken in. This age channels itself into the magic on your hand. Eight years closer to the end, closer to oblivion, marked not by wrinkles, but by gold. You understand this intellectually, but right now your body is consumed by too much horror to do anything about it but scream. You stagger from the force of this rapidly degenerating injury, and your hand is getting more and more gilded by the second, and at that exact same time that the scream peels from your throat, Sayer, you see something. Or rather, someone swathed in the receding mist. His kurta is finely Crest, made of black silk with a simple gold chicon embroidery. Their fur is thick, dark as noiseless night. His antlers are massive, sprawling rivers poking jagged teeth into the sky. Broken red thread 
hangs from them like limpid memories caught in shadow. He has the body of a man, the head of a stag. He is ten feet tall, and his back is turned to you. Do you know him, Sayer? Uh, uh, Sayer sits there, and all of the monsterification begins to subside. All of the wind leaves the room. All of the air is gone. And he stares at this person, this being, and there's something familiar, it, there's something strange and unknown all at the same time, and the monstrification begins to subside as all the air leaves his lungs as he stares and begs, don't turn around, don't turn around, don't look at me. Don't look at me. He turns to face you, Sayer, and his eyes are yours. Zynan, these aren't your kids. What do you do? Zynan still feels the bowstring shaking in his hand from the loosed arrow. He can hear the echoes of the mist, the screams of the gods. They're still resonating inside of him, in the hollow inside of him. But something in there, Lumira's scream, Sayer's scream, wakes something up inside of him. Something that burned away for a moment in the wild sea. He can hear Strike Team Nova, they need him. She needs him. And he runs forward. Nova! And he doesn't think about the mission. He doesn't think about if Xiao Cheng is there. He doesn't think about any of that. He runs straight to them. And reaches, I think, first to Lumira. 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 It burns! It burns! Where's your gum? Let me help you. My pocket! My pocket! And he fishes for it immediately. Seer? And, and Zynan's voice, Lumira's scream for pain, snaps Seer back into his body. And as he looks for the ghost in the room, it's gone. No, Nova! Mira! And Seer hesitates. Lumira's laid out her left arm is far from her body. It seems as if just clutching it to her chest made it hurt more. She had to separate it from her entire body itself. And her hand is laying out and her fingers are curling up and backwards as you see the gold just almost as if she's dipping her hand in molten metal, just covering her fingers all the way down to her wrists. I think the light of it bounces in Zynan's green eyes as he throws the bow away and fishes for that gum and is going to push it into her hand. You do so. You find the gum easily. You know where Lumira keeps it, always. And you press it into Lumira's hands. Lumira, as you grab onto the gum, a part of you, a deep, instinctual part of you, the healer part, the chronergist part, the budding part of you that has done this to yourself, it knows this will not be enough. This will not be enough. You need magic of a greater scale to reverse these effects before you are taken by it completely. You have dabbled in an arcane art that is beyond your comprehension, and now you are reaping the shattered consequences. Only a god and Xiao Chong is by your side. Xiao Chong, the courtier of four symbols, cups those gold-tipped fingers between their hands, and all of you hear a sizzling noise as this molten metal makes contact with their divine fingers, but they don't flinch, they don't wince, they don't even betray a flicker of pain. They simply steal those bright, 
bright orange eyes upon you, Lumira, and they say, Hey, uh, you're gonna be okay, okay? Just breathe. <sighs> and Lumira grunts and grits through it. She's biting her tongue so hard she can f- taste the mercury in her mm. mouth. Um, and she lets Sao Chen take over. She, she doesn't As, know what yep. to do. Sao Chen peels your robe back to see how far the gold has progressed, and we see it, it's gone past your wrist, it's going toward the crook of your elbow now. Like, like it's a kind of curse that's eking its way, not just through your body, your bone, your skin, your blood, but your very soul itself. The gold is radiating deep underneath your skin, like a flashlight shining through a thin piece of paper is what's happening. And Xiao Cheng, without looking at Zainan, but says very calmly, Zainan, can you keep her tethered to you? Umira, look at me. And Zainan looks at her with eyes that she's never seen before from him. He looked at Sing with them, he's looked at Seer with them, but for the first time, green, soft eyes that once looked at a darker-skinned, freckled girl look down on Lumira's beautiful face. And this dusty man isn't dusty, he's a farmer and he just cares and he wants to anchor her to him. Lumira, I need you to look at me. I need you to stay with me. Lumira's grunting and groaning, writhing in pain, most of it coming directly from her left side as it grows, but she locks eyes with you. She's never been able to hold her emotions from her eyes. Her eyes are glassy and wide and terrified. And Sayer sees those eyes, those eyes that pierce an arrow deep into his heart. He's meant to be her protector, Nova's protector. But how could he have done this again? Too little, too late, again. A sin now twofold. A chasm now between himself and Nova. What is he to do? What is he to do? Too little, too late. The thing he's meant to do, trained to do. As Sayer sits there, watching the monstrification drain out of him like dark crimson blood leaving a corpse. He remembers the pages, the dry, dry pages of the trans handbook for bulwarks, fighters, protectors. In the event of an ambush, enact maneuver 44, the orbiting suns. And Sayer grabs onto his moon knives, his crescent blades at his side, and begins orbiting around Nova like a watchdog, the trained bulwark he's meant to be. And he anchors down, squats right at the front of where Lumira and Zainan and Xiao Chang are having this conversation, this tethering, and he looks for that ghost, that threat, the stone lion monster, anything that can hurt his strike team. Sayer, the hall of peerless destiny is empty, completely empty, as empty as an altar to a god whose name has been devoured by another thousands of years ago. Empty. And Lumira, by your side, you feel Xiao Cheng's magic beginning to bind like a tourniquet around your forearm, staunching the gold from progressing. And tell me, Lumira, how far down does this gold curse end? It is at least, if it's not directly at where her elbow meets her bicep, it is maybe a finger step away. Yes. It's consumed her entire left arm. Mm. The gold is a finger's width from darkness. And that's where Xiao Cheng 
is able to staunch it, stopple it, bottleneck it. Their hands are floating above your arm, and there's a, a soft, mellow, but powerful orange aura that radiates off your skin, controlled by this god, as though they were a conductor wielding an instrument. <sighs> okay, I think... I think I did it. You should be stable now. I don't know how you did this or what did this to you, Lumira, but I'm sensing eight years? Eight years. You've aged eight years. I've done what I could to essentially That's move the effects. It's what I'm seeing. There's no doubt about it. I've done my best to reverse it, but I, I can't. What's done is done. I've moved the effects from one end of your lifespan to the other, so instead of aging eight years, the best I could do was just shorten the end of it by eight. Zynan, looking into Lumira's face, you do not see a woman aged by eight years. She still looks like Lumira, except with perhaps a wider streak of hair. Was that there before? And a look of haunted pain and horror in her eyes. Lumira, what this means is you're no longer physically aged eight years, but you've, you've lost almost a decade off the end of your lifespan. I think Zynan looks her over and doesn't fully see the difference because he hasn't really looked at her since he's been not a ghost again. It's been two months and the last time he really saw Lumira in a meaningful way, they were two agents stopping the end of the world. And that so here's calm falls over him. Sayer hears this and his face drops, hidden from the rest of Nova, hidden from Xiao Chang, but there's horror in his face. What has he done? What has he wrought? His doom wrecking havoc once again in the presence of those he loves. And he expects for a moment to hear footsteps orbiting behind him. This is the orbiting sun's maneuver. A watchdog in the front, a protector in the back. Of course, she's not here either. He can't even make the correct maneuver. Xiao Cheng lets out a deep sigh, releases the aura, and Lumira, the burning pain, the, the pain that was so intense that it made you shriek and lose yourself for a moment, it subsides. It's gone. You can feel yourself in your body again. You can feel your consciousness returning to you. You are able to embody yourself in a way that isn't just full of hurt and suffering and injury anymore. And Xiao Sheng takes a few steps back to look at your group as a whole. Hello. Welcome. Welcome back. Where did you go? What happened to you? Thank you. Of course. You're not going to believe it. Another city of heaven. But you weren't there. And everyone God else were. was. What? Another? Another city of heaven filled with the missing gods? Well, almost all of them. You are missing. The god of harmonious names is missing. And their Ooh. sibling. Wait, Jun. That, that, and, and Xiao Cheng, Harping, the former heavenly liaison, but that, this is, oh, I, I need a minute. And Xiao Cheng sits down again at the base of the throne, uh, reeling from this. And then literally one second later, they spring back up uh, and they look focused and intense and they step over the emerald pool. How did you get there? I need to come with you. The Emperor is there too, right? Is she there? In this other city? She's there. Is she okay? Are they all okay? Aside from the missing gods, I mean. They're holding court. Like everything's normal. Just figuring like out what's going on. But is everything normal there? It's 
Sayo shakes his head. It's hard to tell. They're afraid of something. A, a monster in the mist, and we don't know how we got there either. It just happened with the mist. We did meet the monster, though. Or a monster. And Strike Team Nova, as you recall the events you were in in the other city, let's say, before you suddenly reappear back here, you think of the monsters that were menacing you in the mist, the mist-made stone lions. And now that you've had a beat to process everything that's happened and Lumira is no longer screaming and Sayer, that person that you know intimately but you cannot look in the eye, is no longer here, that shade, that ghost, that nightmare, that omen. You all realize that there were three bestial presences in that mist. One of them, no, two of them were stone lions, flitting from god to god, roaring, screeching those strange, inverted, spoiled names. And there was a third one, too. You all felt its presence. That was the one that was gibbering, keening, wailing in a way that was different from these twin stone lions. The third had not yet revealed itself to your party, but it had been there. There were three monsters. And as all of you reflect on this, you also see processing dawning on Xiao Cheng's face like darkness creeping over the surface of the sun. They look askance. When they look back at you, their eyes are almost glassy, like they're reliving something. Upon you all saying things about the mist, about monsters, about chaos, about the gods. And their eyes fall upon Lumira's injured gold hand. Her panting chest, back at Seir, who's still circling, tense, on edge back at Zainan with that broken open face. It couldn't, it couldn't be. No, it couldn't be. It, it, no one said anything about, uh, uh, about a, the d devouring, did they? Lots of people. That's, that's all they could talk about. Oh. Yeah. Oh dear. Oh no, oh no. Hmm, hmm. And Xiao Chung starts to pace back and forth in what tight do you know? circles. There was they some freeze. mentioning. N no. There was some mentioning of the feelings that this felt like weren't anything like they felt before. Not sense the devouring itself. Oh no. What does that That's mean not to good. you? And Xiao Cheng snaps their orange eyes up and locks gazes with you, Lumira. And that glossy, glassy look starts to slip like scales from in front of their eyes. Would you like to connect with someone? Uh, yeah. Let's 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 do so. For okay. Sure. Um... When you connect with someone, this is a move from City of Heaven. Reveal something intimate to them and roll two d six plus tags. So what is the intimate thing you're revealing, aside from the question about what it means to Xiaosheng? Lumira looks at Xiaocheng. Her hand slips into, her gilded hand slips into the pocket of her cloak. And at the same time, she slightly uses well she uses her right hand to turn her belt so her pocket watch now hangs from her right side instead of the left hand side now and she reaches down to grab the pocket watch and fiddle with it never removing her left hand from its pocket I... She lowers her voice just low enough for the both of them to hear. Just them. I did this. And she motions down to her left hand in her pocket. It's what I get for dabbling too strongly with something I don't know completely about yet. 
but it's something that I know innately well. This stays between us, yes? Ah, uh, roll 2d6 plus tags. What tags would you like to invoke here as you're trying to connect with Xiao Chong? Um, I would absolutely love to use forbidden knowledge as well Excellent. as love is power. Yes. Um, yeah, just those two. That Go for it. Roll good. 2d6 plus two. Oh, fucking amazing. Um, 14. Oh, that is a strong hit. So on a 10 plus, you resonate with each other in a true deep way. So you lower your voice to a whisper only you and Xiao Chang can hear. Yes. Yes, this stays between us. But what I can share for the benefit of your party, I think Zainan and Seir should hear as well. And Xiao Chong raises their voice and opens their stance to invite the two of you in. But they don't betray what Lumira told them in confidence. They close their eyes with a knit, pained look. When they open them again, it's set. But there is a deep, deep terror underneath the surface of their gaze that they are just barely controlling. Is it devouring? <laughs> well, like many gods, I was made, born, whisked into existence during it. It was, uh, well, not fun. <laughs> not a good time. Uh, when you were screaming, Lumira, I, it took me back to it. Screaming gods, shrieking gods, gods bleeding, killing, eating each other for survival, yes, for power, pleasure. The only thing we knew back then was blood and death and fire. And then the emperor came along and then Longdu achieved apotheosis and brought order to the sister realms and established the game. And there hasn't been divine cannibalism for almost 1,000 years. So if what you're saying is this other city is encountering a level of chaos that we haven't known since the devouring, then that is very, very, very bad. And I have strived my entire life, my entire divinity, my entire career as courtier of the Four Symbols to make sure that something like that would ne never happen again. You see, the Four Symbols, everything has to be kept in, in balance. And that is my job, and I, I love it. I, I love my job. I love my duty. I love my responsibilities. It, it's why I do what I do. I make sure that everyone gets what they need. I make sure that everyone is happy. If everyone is happy, then no one will be at each other's throats, because if people are at each other's throats and arguing and in conflict, then the devouring might return, and I, we, that can't happen. It's also Yao Long. It's everywhere. Yes. Yes, there are calamities in Yala now, because the gods are missing, there's no one there to to keep nature, the elements, the symbols in harmony. And the demons continue to knock at the gates of heaven. But, but you've seen where the missing gods are. If we go to where they've gone, if I go to where they've gone, if I come back, you say that I'm missing there? Well, let's just, let's, let's bridge the two, yes? I don't we are where they easy. are. What do you mean it's not that easy? They have been going about as if not much has changed. Like normal. It was only once roll call was announced that you were even noticed as being missing, meaning they don't know that they are in some place else different. They also don't know how time works. They don't know how time works. They don't know 
movement between they thought you they thought you lost they thought you were gone perished and with not, the rest and not the entirety of the court believes this is even the devouring or anything They're, along the likes it's tentative at best well well, well hopefully it's not the devouring. That would be that would be quite hmm, quite not fun. Quite quite bad, I would say. Well, okay. It seems like in this city, obviously something is amiss because all the gods are gone. And in the other city, the only things that are amiss are a couple of gods, but they think that they are in the the true city, and I think I am in the true city. I see. Uh, and. Xiao Cheng's eyes catch on you, Sayer, as you were the last to speak. There's there's a beat. They cock their head to the side, their eyes squint a little. I... Hmm. I thought I recognized something in your eyes for a moment there. Hmm? May, maybe I'm, I'm a saw. Huh? What? Uh, it just... There was, there was something in your eyes that... That scared me for a minute. Uh, sorry, I, and Sayer has not felt the mask leave his face for so long. It's almost like a safety blanket, and he quickly uh, puts it back on. Uh, I, <clears throat> so, sorry, I'm quite, the ambush took us all by surprise, and I'm unsettled. But, as he changes the topic, they call the Heavenly Emperor... Devourer of the Devouring. Yes. If the Devouring's been devoured, can can it come back? And what did Are it look sure like? That was all of it. it well, yeah. the, the Devouring wasn't exactly um, a condition. It was more so uh, an age, an era. Uh, an age and an era where gods were fighting each other constantly. Constantly. No one really knows how it began or why it began. Only that there was desperation and there was suffering everywhere. The mortals on Yaolan suffered because of it. And all the gods everywhere suffered because of it. Until the Emperor came and... Well, through force and power and diplomacy and charisma and magic and destiny was able to put an end to it. Oh. As Xiao Cheng is, ta is talking, Zainan hears the word magic and destiny. And without saying anything, looks to Lumira and doesn't fully do this, the, the like motion to summon the Oracle, but does it to her so that she can see it. So, go ahead. Uh, Lumira looks back at Zainan, eyebrow raised, like, are you sure this is something you want me to do right now? And he gives her just like a, a hold, just letting the, co just trying to pretend like they can actually be subtle for a moment, essentially, and gives her the hold symbol, but definitely is like, we need to do that. We need to call the Oracle and get to the bottom of this. Lumira nods, but she doesn't do it regularly. It's in her eyes. She looks at you and slowly blinks. Not breaking contact with you. <sighs> Xiao Cheng lets out a short, clipped, thoughtful sigh. <clears throat> you all mentioned that there were three other gods aside from myself. Who are missing mm. from the other city, correct? Yes. Hmm. Xiao Cheng places their thumb and their forefinger against their chin and strokes it with consideration. And all of you, as you continue to reflect on all the clues, all the knowledge you've collected from this other city and now this city, you know that it's it was less a matter of people acting like things were were fine kind of, uh, and more so that there was a sense of unease everywhere in the other city. There were people who were essentially 
in denial. They were in the gambling house, mm -hmm. having fun, trying not to think about it, but there were very few people out on the streets. Like, no one was just kind of walking around willy-nilly. The only people you saw out there were either kicked out from the gambling house or they were praying at a temple, right? Uh, and you had overheard snippets of people talking about how there were gods who had gone missing. And when the emperor had kind of established that these four gods, Xiao Cheng, Hai Ping, Ming Yu, and Wei Jun were gone, she'd spoken with about it as though just getting everyone on the same page like it was common knowledge there were rumors about it but now establishing the facts so there are aspects of normality and aspects of bizarre tension and strangeness in both versions of the city of heaven mm -hmm. and xiao cheng lowers their hand from their chin and turns back to face your party at large i'm trying to find a connection between these gods outside of myself, and the only one I can think of is, well, this might be rather embarrassing for them, but they're not here to defend themselves necessarily. Uh, Higher Ping, Mingyu, and Wei Jun were all rather troubled in their own way. They had certain, let's say, vices. I suppose it should just be good practice for me to share this with all of you in, in the spirit of working together toward the common goal of bringing the gods back, yes. Uh, mm. Higher Ping had a uh, Affairs, let's say. A taste uh, for morals, with a... too. It's... Yes! We I'm can surprised talk... you know that. We can talk candidly about that. It's not as if they are here. That's true. Well, I trust that all of this will stay between the four of us in this empty hall of peerless destiny. Mm -hmm. uh, us and, yeah. and Goose. Sure. Again, and, and who Goose. am I to tell? Yes. Lumira gestures... <laughs> uh, just like this empty back behind her, yeah. like who am I? Who am I telling? Sayer snaps back uh, to that confirmation that we're not going to tell anyone, and he's distracted uh, mm. as because he's been staring at every wall, every facet that exists in this space, and he just goes, "Uh, yeah, no, um, they they all have scandals, I think." Mm. And as you continue to look around, Xiao Cheng notices that. They seem to note it internally, but they don't comment on it. Their orange eyes linger on your distraction, Sayer, and linger on your bright blue eyes for a moment. A flicker of that fear sparking up in their gaze for a moment before they return their focus to the group at large. Well, what I do know on my end, aside from the information broker, aside from Long Hui, it is my job to, well, be in everyone else's business in some sense of the word, to, to kind of know everything that's happening everywhere, to be able to keep the peace, you know, between the four symbols and between all the other gods of the City of Heaven, all several thousand of them. Uh, well, what I do know about Mingyu is she ascended, but she was not always known as the god of harmonious names. She ascended as the god of truthful titles. Her specialty was seeing the true cores of mortals, demons, and other gods. And I've heard that, well, they bestow names upon other deities that resonate within the very fiber of their beings. But, of course, there were some complaints <laughs> from gods who weren't very happy about the titles Mingyu were bestowing upon them shortly after her ascension. So, they began choosing more, let's say, flattering titles to keep the peace, uh, you see. Would she be able to give it to cultivators as well? Yes, certainly. A name received by the god of truthful titles, now known as the god of harmonious names, is a name that resonates within your very soul. No matter who you are. One one that she can give without knowing anything about you. And Zynan yes. hears what the mist said to him. And a piece locks into place in his brain. Mm -hmm. So, let me get this right. And y'all hear the familiar click of the face of her pocket watch. She starts to pace back and forth. Her left hand has never left her pocket. So their job or their title, what they were regaled for mm -hmm. is the ability to be able to look at a person, see their core, and 
bestow a name on them that reflects the core of said person. However, when they did do that, mm -hmm. they were mad. There were people who were mad. Oh, yes, I believe there were nine formal complaints lodged against them in total. Yes, you can find the complaints in the Azer complex, one of the administrative buildings, in fact, if you would like. It's uh, good to... The names themselves are quite, well, they're brutally honest, let's say. Is it inconvenient? Well, no one wants to be called person... God of Desperation and Famine. You know what I mean? It's, it's not exactly a good luck. I... Isn't it convenient that the person who can give true names and the person who knows everything about everyone are the ones that are missing? It sounds like there are a lot of people here who have a problem accepting who they really are and what about the sibling oh wadrin well she did everything her sister did not much of a personality or aspirations outside of emulating their sibling i didn't mean that offensively uh, uh, j just in you know that's kind of their reputation <clears throat> i see And Sayer thinks about the two stone lions. Mm -hmm. And locks that into the back of his head. And, well, all of you seem to know everything about Hiraping already. There were rumors that I may or may not have verified myself that she had taken a mortal lover some dozen years ago. Obviously the mortal lover, well, she's long since gone now. Who uh, would uh, stand to benefit from, say, you being out of this picture? Not to sound. I'm sorry, can you repeat that last bit? It just cut out for me. Sorry. Uh, who would benefit from you being out of the picture? M me being out of the picture. I. Uh, I'm not sure. Are you training I anyone don't... like an apprentice, an accomplice? No, 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 no. I, I'm the only courtier of four symbols that there is. I wasn't, I didn't have a mentee. I didn't have a mentor. I suppose outside of the emperor, though I wouldn't really consider her a mentor. More like a, we'd have to get into that. Uh, but I'm not More like sure. A uh, um, well, a, 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 a parental figure, perhaps. Hmm. Anyway, moving on, hmm. and uh, Xiao Cheng <laughs> flourishes themselves again and puts on a bright chipper smile that doesn't quite reach their eyes after scurrying along past that topic. I don't mean to flatter myself, none too much, but I don't think anyone would benefit from my disappearance. I think you know I'm quite anxious to get back. Well, yes, it's it's my job, but never in a way to use against them, I would never do that. I, I simply know things about people in order to keep everyone happy. Are you sure the people around here know that you don't plan to be malevolent with the knowledge you know? Oh, the power well, of I... knowledge is... <laughs> can't be mistaken or uh, underestimated. Uh, uh... There's a healthy uh, dose of um, suspicion, uh, tenseness between all of the gods from what we could tell. And My thing <sighs> is, and Lumira starts pacing back and forth again. There's got to be someone that finds your presence threatening or else you would be in the other city with all the rest of the gods <sighs> and not singled out to be here by yourself. That is one explanation for why I'm here. Another could just be that for whatever reason, when the mist thickened, it took everyone else, but not me to this other city of heaven. What were you doing when that happened? If you don't mind me asking. Uh, and Xiao Chong looks slightly embarrassed when he say that, and they stand sheepishly in front of Goose, like almost protectively. I was preparing a meal. 
You were preparing a meal. Yes. Uh, a a banquet, a, a little feast. Oh, you know, some vegetables, some fruits, so some That must meats. have been one... That must have been some meal to keep oh. you from... Yes. Disappearing with the rest of your peers. To be honest, I'm not sure if the meal had anything to do with it. I was juggling a, a thousand different plates when the mist thickened. You have to understand, after the Emperor proclaimed that morning that they were going to announce their virtue, over a dozen gods came to me asking for favors about, oh, what if the virtue ends up being this symbol, then I want to make sure I give them this gift, and oh, would you like to cook this meal for this god in preparation for the announcement, and oh, this and that and this. Not to mention the requests from the symbols themselves. I, I had a lot. A lot on my plate. Sayer's stomach growls at the consistent consistent repetition of meals, foods, and plate. Mm. Oh, Simon looks at uh, Sayer finally. Uh, sorry, um, mm, s regardless, uh, the other gods, we need to still confirm where they are. If you are here, it might stand to reason that maybe they arrived here after you and we might have missed them. Yes, that was my exact thought. I was thinking, and Xiao Cheng kind of bows a little politely in all of your direction, to give you esteemed cultivators perhaps a, a moment to yourselves, a chance to breathe, talk, recuperate, I could take it upon myself to visit the abodes of the missing gods, Higher Ping, Ming Yu, and Wei Xuan. I'm very familiar with the City of Heaven. I would know where they live, I know their favorite places to frequent. I can check those areas with a fine tooth comb. That that would be that would be wise, I think, just to just to eliminate that as an option and not have to pursue it if it's not worth the time. And we can yes. use a chance to regroup. Yes, yes, it seems like the three of you have had your own plates full in this other city. Uh, I do have a request, though. Could you look after Goose while I'm gone? Of course. Mom. And Zion looks down at Goose. Sorry you got uh, left behind there. Honk. And Goose nuzzles up against your shin. Come here. Well, Goose has been... The goose of the town since everyone's been gone. I've never seen a goose so happy running around in empty streets. He's got quite a um quite an attitude though, so make sure he doesn't take advantage of you. It's alright. Will do. Very well. Then I shall leave the three of you to your own devices. I will be back in likely just a few hours at most. Alright. Very well. I'll see you soon. And we'll Xiaochong turns the uh, wide hem of their uh, skirt flaps in the breeze as they turn and they exit the Hall of Peerless Destiny. And then they're gone. <sighs> so, you all right? And Zainan looks at Sayer. Yeah, um, just watching out for another ambush we is the oracle does the oracle work good question i i don't know um and almost distractedly like she's not even paying attention summons the oracle the oracle swirls into existence oh. over her head like a little bobbing orange oh he he hell i was up Oracle. to nothing while you were gone i've never missed your face so much oh i don't really have a face but thank you you were up to nothing no i missed all three of you so much i missed the three of you all and the oracle floats to each of the three of you and like like kisses even though they have no mouth like kisses each of your cheeks and they kind of like nuzzle like they're trying to hug your necks oh i was so lonely i was so worried about all three of you i'm so glad that three of you are okay how can i help you so you i didn't purposely Go ahead. so you couldn't tell where we were or no reach out to us 
I tried. I tried uh, making myself appear next to where you were, but it wouldn't work. As the Oracle, like, goes to Zynan, Zynan finally pulls his hat up and uses it to kind of guard his neck against the Oracle <laughs> nuzzling against it. He's like, no, this is too friendly, actually. Uh, and finally puts it on again. You, and you uh, didn't... We tried to contact you. Multiple mm. times. Oh, I didn't feel it at all. Usually I feel like a little tug uh, beneath my... Well, I, f I guess for you it would kind of be like your navel cavity. I don't really have a belly button, though. But kind of beneath where, where I might have a belly button if I if I were a person. I had a person body. Well, that's interesting and strange. I don't want to think about that too much. You yes, I'm an orange. You have a bit of a navel right now. Oh. Well, don't look at it. I'm embarrassed. <sighs> Sorry. Anyway, I'm so glad the three of you are back. How can I help? Did you think we left you? Well, a, a part of me a little bit. You know, you just kind of vanished. But I had a feeling it wasn't your fault. And that you wouldn't have chosen to do that. I was mostly worried about you. I, Thank you for your concern. I was, I was a little ball bearing into oh, the time. Oh, 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 I've missed that. And to be honest, I was mostly worried about what the two of you would do without me. Yo, know? without someone to keep the peace. Like Xiao Chung, like I'm your Xiao Chung. <laughs> Which is funny, because their name kind of, well, it also kind of means orange. Does it? Yes, they've been teaching me god tongues. So you were up to something. You did not speak it before. No. Oh, that reminds me, I forgot to ask Xiao Chong about that. But anyway, oh, is there okay. anything I can w assist you all with? Will you please? I need the direct line to Artemis. Yes. Yes, ma'am, yes, sirs. Uh, the oracle shimmers and then emits a beam of holographic light from their navel. And through that light, flickering and layering into existence, is Artemis's office, and then the hand of fate herself. <sighs> Artemis, when the oracle summons them, appears as a mirage of blue static forming from that front camera support. They're sitting at their desk writing something and they're glowing a dull kind of silver color, almost haloed in this shedding particle of static and blue light. They seem to be working on a mountain of paperwork that probably rivals the heights of the City of Heaven, and as the oracle swirls into existence in front of them, those gold eyes lift up and they see each of you. Huh. Strict Team Nova, good of you to make contact status up. And in the middle of the sentence, in the middle of the word, Artemis pauses, taking in the expressions on each of your faces, the haggard fear. And then their whole body turns, so it's not just their head lifted up away from the paperwork, their whole body turns, poised and attentive, and the full weight of the saint's attention rests on you. Nova, status update. And this mission is complicated. Much more difficult than we initially were thinking and or planning. Your initial debrief mentioned that the City of Heaven would be bustling. And it is not. Not this City of Heaven, anyways. We fell out of contact, Hand. We were in the other to city. summon the Oracle or you. Tell me everything. And I'm jamming now. How much do you tell <laughs> Artemis? And is there anything that you leave out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was for you. That was for you. Val. The yeah. laughter from Sayer. <laughs> Sayer does not speak of what was said to him. Uh, he uh, by the stone lions. He does not speak of the person he saw. But Artemis, you see, Sayer is uncharacteristically distracted. 
he is your most attentive pupil. He may have failings in other aspects, but not on his reverence or attention to you. This is his first ever, perhaps, breach of that covenant. Mm. Zynan goes into meticulous detail. The way that he has done many, many, many times before to Artemis. But he does leave out seeing Sing. He also leaves out exactly the same, uh, not talking about the closed door ghost knife uh, being given names by the mist, but for the most part, otherwise goes into extremely good detail of what we know. You know Lumira. Her memory is photographic, not just what she reads, but what she sees. And she tells you in very specific Lumira fashion, a play-by-play. -play. But Sinan and Sayir note she very specifically leaves out what happened with her hand. Artemis drinks in every detail, meticulous, insightful. And as you give this report, she prompts the right questions at the right time. She listens, she's sharp-eyed, she nods, she takes notes. Concern starts to knit their brow, but not fear. Nothing like what you saw outside of the prime oracle chambers. But she's not brushing you off, either. She's not asking you to explain the unexplainable. She's just taking in the story solidly, like she's there. Like that presence exudes through the oracle static, through the blue light to reach you. And when you come to the end of your update, they nod. Just the once. Understood. Nova, do you wish to return to the Syndicate? I will ensure that your mission failure is voided given the circumstances. You will be referred directly to therapeutics and recovery. Failure is not an option. No. Artemis. You heard him. Lumira looks like there's something else on the tip of her tongue, like she's trying to fight the urge to say it, but it spells out of her lips anyway. She would not let us abandon ship. Hand. We see this through. Like Nova always does. For a moment, their expression wavers just a tiny bit. And then a small glint of... Yes, pride. Pride flickers across their eyes as they look at each of you. There was no hesitation from a single one of you. And that shines through. It makes the blue static look gold, like a god's blood caught in a spider web before the image readjusts. Very well then, since you are choosing to stay, I am invoking the Eurydice Protocol. This is a subset of specialized conduct, expectations, and rules reserved for missions like this one, where the planes have organically or perhaps inorganically sprawled beyond the reach of the Syndicate's perceptual magic. You say that this mist barred you from contacting your oracle, removed you from this version of the City of Heaven, and that the gods in the other realm are also unable to traverse safely between realms. Correct. Yes, sir. Hmm. Interesting. This is not the first time that we've had strike teams cut off from the Syndicate. It often occurs when Oblivion's presence is nearby, interfering with the connective threads of the journey. Thus, the Eurydice Protocol. I suspect there may be more to this Mayday mission than that. You may be dealing with a lingering tendril of Oblivion as you were in the Wild Sea, or perhaps more likely, this may be a simple, perhaps not simple, it may be a case of this plane's divine magic outgrowing the foundation of the journey. 
Either way, the Eurydice Protocol is of utmost importance. Even when we are disconnected, you must remember that I am with you. You must trust that I am here. I trust you like I trust in her will. Zion Eurydice sees pro- the boots. Zion sees the boots on the loam in the wild sea, the boots in the dust. There's no question. And he just nods. When you are in this other city, this city of mist, let's call it, you must rely on each other. Even the strongest agent is vulnerable without their strike team. There is a reason that we send you in groups, even the Twilight Guard and the Wild Hunt go together. You protect one another. You see things that the others wouldn't. You must fill in each other's weaknesses. It is of the utmost importance. Because the truth is, agents, that I have never been able to save you. A jagged flash of grief crosses her face like an arrow piercing her heart. You have your maydays, and your protocols, and your training, and you have me, but at the end of it, in the moments that matter, the moments that really count, you only have each other. You trust in her will. You trust in your team. You trust in yourself. You are not sent here to be thrown to the wolves. The Prime Oracle does not assign you a challenge that you cannot surmount. This mission is dangerous. But danger is the lifeblood of a trans agent. Change is never painless. It is the sacrifice that we make to have a hand in the heart of the journey. (sighs) We give you guardrails and safety measures because fear makes your fingers slip. But your minds, your hearts, your souls, They are sharp enough to cut steel. That is what it means to be an agent. With or without your oracle there to keep watch on you. Keep your aim true. Keep your eyes up. Keep your hearts unclouded. You save each other. You save yourselves. Have I made myself clear? Yes, sir. Yes, and... Zynan nods, but Artemis knows his heart isn't all the way in it. They take it in. They see it. They register. They acknowledge, even. Good. Good. When you are in the City of Mist, you must employ every protocol in order to progress your mission and keep each other safe. You'll need to make meticulous notes. And when you return here on the day cycle, so it seems... Report to the Oracle and update the Syndicate. This mist is your highest priority and its connection with the strongest gods of this realm, the Emperor and the Four Symbols, as well as your mission focus, the god Syashom. Keep your focus. And she considers another phrase building in her throat, in her mouth, in the back of her mind considers it, and then shares it. Additionally, I would act, I would like you to add a submission to your current focus. If you can capture even a small fragment of this mist, I will be able to send it to the archival team for assessment to help with future missions, and perhaps even to make headway reconnecting the threads of this journey here and now. Bring me a sample on return, or feed it to the Oracle for processing. Mira grins wickedly, like Artemis had given her and just her a mission. Their eyes do linger on you for a moment, especially as the life kind of breathes back into you, the fear fades away, the determination resettles on your features. And that pride flickers again. She looks through each of you. Her words instilling a kind of truthful power in each of you. And honesty. Brutal, yes. But honest. 
And then her eyes land on you, Zynan, through the hiccuping static. Agent Ash, a private word. Yes, sir. I'll speak with each of you in turn. And as though she was present, Artemis pivots, the static, almost 3D, like they're there, like they're caught in between threads and fabrics. And I think the oracle floats a ways off toward one of those huge jade pillars. And Artemis almost looks around like they could potentially see not just you, but the rest of the hall of peerless destiny. And then their gaze resettles and focuses on you. Zainan follows her, just like always. <sighs> You're not convinced, Agent. We're a team of three in a plane with gods. I have to admit, I feel a bit unprepared. Like, maybe we were not uh, the best team suited for this mission. Hmm. <laughs> Someone like Phoenix. Someone like Phoenix. Hmm. Yeah. And it pains him to say it, but there is honesty. Artemis takes it, acknowledges it, and then a small rumble of something, a a, a chuckle. It's not dismissive, it's almost fond. A part of them that you're starting to become more and more familiar with, like a rumble through steel, you remember it in the edge of a knife, that sound, particular. Mm. You're doubting yourself, Agent. Gods are not nearly half as frightening as you think, Agent Ash. What is a god but the rains that do or do not fall? Gods are not omniscient. And they are not infallible. <laughs> and that laugh is but wistful. At the word, at the comment about the rain falling and not falling, he seizes up. And he chokes a little on the certainty that he had been addressing her with this whole time and he looks to them painting in all the color in this silvery view it does matter if the rain falls or doesn't and it's not fallen on Yaolan and I don't know what to do that's a calamity that's that feels like oblivion I know that it's because the gods are gone. But that's what I understand. We we saw their great emperor. And she was more... She was very big in the journey in a way that I was not prepared for. Hmm. Artemis nods, takes you seriously, again. I see. Your insights, Agent, are why you were sent on this particular mission. I will begin the process of updating your access to potentially allow interplanar travel for you long. I'd advise against attempting to plane jump on your own, especially if the threads of the journey are untethered here. You may end up somewhere unexpected, or worse, nowhere at all. I'll speak with the other hands, assess your report on Yaolan with any mayday calls that may still be processing in the Prime Oracle if what you say is true, then it's possible that there's already a a team on mission trying to reach you as you are trying to reach them. That would be not surprising, given what we saw. I'll look into it. As for the last thing, Agent Ash, gods are powerful, I will not deny. The structure of power is 
presented as it is for a reason. But so is a raptor. So is a gun. So are many things more powerful than you when you are mortal. We all make choices with our callings. Don't discount yours simply because it doesn't come from the divine. Powers wielded without intention are hardly wielded at all. In his eyes, fear holds on like a stubborn barb. This is a flaw that has always been there. A fear. Power. He takes her words and fits them around all of the other words that have caught on this barb. From her, from Naeem, from other agents. Her eyes look over you and land on the bow at your side. And something flicks in her gaze, but that is unrecognizable. That is far away. That is distant. But her eyebrows almost jump. And a small smile. She's playing with you, almost. But it's by design. It's by intention. Lift your bow. And he does immediately, as if he was ready on command. You can't Me. see her lower body, but she does seem to get up from her desk. The oracle almost follows like it's a perfect FaceTime call, right? Uh, at the perfect <laughs> distance. Every streamer Saint wishes ability. they had one. Perfect. You know? <laughs> Saint ability. Call. Yeah, exactly. Um, it follows her around, I think, as she begins to walk around you in this three-dimensional static space as you lift the bow. Aim at the sun, Zynan. And he thinks about it, gets ready, draws an arrow, pushes his hat back, and looks around this hall, trying to find the light. It's coming from a large window, up high. And in one quick, fluid lightning motion, he draws and looses the arrow. He doesn't even sight it. That, Agent Ash, is your power. Do not let your fingers slow with fear. Shoot the sun. Hmm. Protect them. Yes, hand. Please take me to see Agent Sayer. And Zynan does not put himself back together and uh, walks Artemis to Sayer. Sayer was probably sat cross-legged by the mirror. He's still distracted, eyes wild, looking for something. But he keeps looking over at Lumira multiple times, attempting a conversation, and you arrive. Sign him. Hand. Your turn. Right. And Zynan just walks away. <laughs> he just hands Artemis off and is just like, Okay, your turn for this. I need to go take a breather. <laughs> Sayer nods and walks with Artemis to another corner of this space. His eyes so wild, looking around the walls, averting his gaze in a telltale way before his teacher. Hmm. Your teacher watches you. You can tell vaguely that sometime between the last time you spoke and when you're getting handed off, she seems to have stood up. And the static moves and ripples as this muscular form 
flexes, moves, shifts with you, almost mirroring that antsy energy radiating off of you. And then it lands somewhere solid. She must be leaning against that window. Sayer, your report wasn't as thorough as your previous work. Would it lead me to expect from you? Is there something troubling you? Uh, Sayer realizes this, uh, how silent he was throughout the account that we owed the patron saint of mortals, and his eyes go wide, and he leans against a pillar on the avenue of peerless destiny. And I, the ambush, I just wanted to make sure we were safe. And he's, his eyes are still darting around, not meeting yours. He's still distracted. She watches you. She sees this. Acknowledges. It's a good instinct, Sayer. But what is it that you're looking for? The mist has receded, and I can only assume that the monster has receded with it. What are you on guard for? Hmm? Uh... <clears throat> and he reduces to a 14-year-old boy again. Caught in the middle of not paying attention to class or distracted at a fancy new sword that the patron saint has shelved on a weapon rack. Oof. Forgive me, Hand. It is unbecoming of me. I... I was just seeing things. That interests her. Her head twists. Seeing things. Hmm. Yes, it's it's nothing. I just uh uh Don't say it's nothing, Sayer. I would not be so quick to dismiss your feelings. Your omens have come in many forms, even when you were a child. And she begins Classically, you can tell by the way that their shoulders land, the way that her eyes move. She's beginning a lesson. Yes, an intentional lesson. A hunter must learn to listen, even to the things that we're not prepared to hear. We must be adaptable. We must be wise. Sayer, when we hear things, we must learn what to listen to. Sayer, your attention wavers. Even as Artemis speaks, their voice begins to fade out as a pang of hunger rises inside your body, demanding your attention, your acknowledgement. <laughs> Sayer? And I... And I think a growl escapes his stomach. Agent Sayer. And there's concern, confusion, almost, playing in her face. Agent Sayer, are you listening? I... I'm finding it hard to... And I... I'm hungry. And that omen, that thing, I... I thought I... And he taps his finger against the bicep of his left hand. I thought I saw someone who looked like me. Who looked like you? Seer. Yeah. Mark crack on the little hunter theme. As you lose a lesson from the patron saint. Taking GMing from me? <laughs> I said it's mine now. We hit 1k and it's I said I'm gonna GM now too for fun. <laughs> I've marked it. As a tweet. As a treat. Threatening. Artemis frowns deeply. Not with disappointment, 
but with concern. Seer, if you hear nothing else of my lessons, hear this. You cannot be a protector if you yourself are being eaten alive by your own doubt, by your own heart, by your own insecurities. Find something to eat, Agent, and please let your strike team protect you as much as you protect them. Let them help you. Listen. Listen. Listen, Sayer. Your heart can tell you many things. It cannot be clouded. Not here. Not in this moment. And another arrow knocks within his chest. Another failure. I understand that. I... I will do as you say. Sir. She almost looks like she wants to say something else. A plea, almost, forming to hear. But it fades as I think your attention also starts to waver again. Take me to Agent Lumira, please. Yes, sir. And Sayer brings the Oracle to Lumira. Before you even get up, Sayer, Lumira is far from you, but close by. And she's taking notes. Her left hand is scribbling as fast as she can, fast she can write, but she's not looking down. She's looking up. And when she sees you wrap up your phone call, she quickly shuts her book and summons the oracle directly to her. You don't have to move. It is something that's taught at trans, the healers to save time mm. from having to go find the oracle they get a direct summon that they're taught themselves that comes directly to them and lumira is looking artemis directly in her face and though the i suppose the direction doesn't move artemis's face turns to meet yours instinctively as though they could feel the movement through the space and they turn away from Sayer with the tiniest look over their shoulder. One more hesitation. That boy is going to be the death of her. And then she turns to give you her full attention. Agent Lumira. And Artemis. You seem focused. When have I ever not been? Hmm. Very true. Very true. But this focus, Lumira, the drive in your mission, is there anything else? Lumira is stoic and if this was a cartoon, it would almost be comical. The oom she hears in the back of her throat as she's like swallowing um, and gagging a little bit at that, trying not to uh, let on to Artemis what is truly bothering her. She steals herself. I'm not sure what is going on here. But I will do everything in my power to find out. That I do not deny, Agent Mumira, and that is also not what I'm asking. I have no doubt in my mind that you will 
get to the bottom of what's going on and you will do what you can to right this plane back in the path of the journey. I'm asking you. Why haven't you shown me your left hand? You've been hiding it in your pocket. <sighs> it is interesting how much mortals try to hide. And she is teasing you almost now. There's a small smile. Lumira kind of balks at that. Like, there's, there's been so many times she has tried to hide things from you growing up and you've called her out every single time. She, a smirk appears on her face as she, it's like, why do you even still try at this point? You always get found out. There was a mishap. And I didn't want you to worry. I'm fine. It's been settled. Everything's okay. A mishap. Accident. She acknowledges the weight of accident. And you know that in her mind, accident is Amaru. Is Strict Team Phoenix. Is the warning from Lucy about your magical proclivities. But she doesn't push yet. She just nods, knowing that you are not telling her the full story. She nods. She listens. You know, there perhaps has not been a time since you came to Trans that it was not possible for you to reach me. And Lumira looks up and parts her lips for a moment to state her regular stance, permission to speak. Granted. You don't even have to say it. She stops herself mid-sentence because you've told her that before as well. You don't have to ask Artemis. <laughs> I never realized I've never felt more alone in the universe than not having you answer my call. You always have. If I fell and scraped my knee, you were there. If I sprained, uh, if I sprained my wrist, or my hand in training, you were there. Which you have many times. This time I was up against something I have never seen before. And you weren't. And I know it wasn't purposeful. But I can't ex can't ignore that sting right now. Still. I want you to do something for me. Take out your pocket watch. <laughs> Lumira knowingly does it with her right hand. And that's the hand with the gold on it, right? Left yeah. hand is the hand with the gold. Gotcha. 
Open it. And she opens the watch. What does it say? Read the letters to me. T. U. N. G. A. L. Tungle. That's right. You could never be apart from me, my brave girl. It is carved on your heart. It is carved on mine. Every movement you make, I am there with you. You do not doubt me, so do not doubt what I have taught you and what you have learned. You are so much stronger than you know. Do not forget what I said before. When you believe that you are alone, you are vulnerable. Do not let anything take that from you. You carry me with you. You carry Tungal with you. You carry her. You carry him, my cat, with you. <laughs> Love you, Bao Bao. It's really messing with me right now. I was in it too. <laughs> Do not let anything take that from you. You carry me with you. You carry Tungal with you. You carry her with you. You carry them with you. And Artemis looks to Zion and Sayer. When Mira meets your gaze over towards her two remaining strike team members, and she looks back at you with those same big soft eyes that you remember. And just low enough for the both of you all to hear. She repeats something that you probably haven't heard since she was young. But she looks up at you and says, Cross your heart. Promise. Artemis raises the hand up to their heart. And she raises Crosses. hers. Cross. I promise. You may travel to places that I cannot reach. But do not leave us behind. Do not be gone for long. Let them help you, Lumira. You do not need to hold the weight of the world on your shoulders alone. Should you falter, let them catch you. And together, rise twice as strong. I promise. Twice as strong. Twice as strong. That's right. My brave girl. And Artemis stands, smiles down at you for one moment. And as she turns, you know that she's getting ready to go. She said all that she needs to say. She has given you the proper protocol. She has heard everything she needs to hear. She is ready to send you back out on mission. And a passing remark comes, I think, as she almost as though she was going to walk right out into the city of heaven. The oracle floats almost to the center of the room, like they're going to head down the hall of peerless divinity. And she says to you, the waters miss you, Lumira. Search for them here, too. And then she disappears. <laughs> the static dissipates in little sparkles. And as this blue light twinkles down to the floor and scatters into nothingness, all of you realize and see that Xiao Cheng has returned. They're right there in the threshold of the Hall of Peerless Destiny. And if they saw Artemis and or saw them vanish, 
they definitely don't show it on their face. They're striding forward insistently as though ready to give you all an update. Hello, hi, I'm back, I've looked. Are all of you ready to hit the ground running, so to say? Yes, what did you find? Well, some bad news and perhaps some good news. I'm not quite sure how to interpret this, but either way, I couldn't find any of the missing gods. Not Hierping, not Mingyu, not Wei Jun. No signs of them being there in any way, shape, or form. Just more clues, more signals that the mist took them and they were dropping whatever they were doing in the middle of it. It's rather confusing and quite concerning. The good news is, well, they're not here and not hiding from me, so that's one less thing to worry about, I suppose. And the locations that you looked for them at, was there anything out of the ordinary? No, not more out of the ordinary than everyone else being gone. Shattered plates from when they presumably were carrying them, knocked over ink pot here or there, but nothing that would suggest, again, a sign of a struggle or anything bizarre or odd. Hmm. Um, well, what's I think, the good uh, news? Yeah. What was that? Uh, what's the good news? Oh! Well, it's like I said. They're not here, so there's no confrontation to be had. Cool. So it sounds like we have to uh, work this from both sides, even if the other side is a mist-shrouded world full of gods that are missing. Yes. Yes, it does seem, based on what you told me, that this city of mist, let's say, descends during the night, and the city of heaven, which I'm in, and for some reason I don't go to the city of mist at night, stays here all day and all night. Trust me, while you were gone, this place was still empty, even though it was eventide. Twilight, and then midnight, and then day. Hmm. And... That sounds like to me that uh, we should make sure to return together in the evenings in our investigations in case you, I know you wanted to join us, Xiaocheng, maybe you could find a way. Yes, yes, I would like to go with one of you at the very least as we continue to embark upon our explorations and investigations of the City of Heaven by day. Uh, that was the other thing I was going to propose. Even if we're not in the City of Mist and able to talk to the other gods and figure things out in the dirt, so to speak, I am sure there are clues here, dayside, that we can continue to comb over. It seems like what you were doing in the Black River gave you quite a lot of clues and quite a lot of momentum when you did land in the mist. I would propose that we continue to investigate the symbols' various abodes. My uh, thoughts exactly, and I believe at least one of us has an open invitation to a particular archive. And he looks at Lumira. Oh! I had <laughs> plans to visit the Vermilion Library. <laughs> I thought what you were saying earlier about knowledge and power sounded familiar. <clears throat> I beg your pardon. Well, that's, that's what the Gentlewoman Scholar is all about. Power, knowledge, love. Mm. I assume you've been spending some time with her in the City of Mist, but that is not of my business, as they say. <laughs> it's not. <gasps> <laughs> and smiles, smiles amicably. <laughs> <laughs> Though, you do all pick up on the fact that even in these brief little back and forths you've been having with Xiao Cheng, they, they seem to pick up on a lot, even the things that are unspoken. Hmm. Well, we've been to the Black River. I doubt you two uh, would want to go to the library at all. I wouldn't call it my specialty. Sayer looks like he wants to say that he wants to go with you, uh, but then notices the banter you have with Xiao Cheng, uh, and recedes a little bit, his eyes still lingering on your golden hand. Uh, Seer. Hmm? I saw your, uh, encounter with the, uh, 
the Forge Master's apprentice. Maybe there's something there for us. Lu Hua. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes, it would be good to check out the White Forge and see if I can learn more about Ta and Pada's master. And then his eyes flick to that memory of mainly seeing the back of the Forge Master and how quickly they rushed away. Uh, there might be something. Excellent. So, Sayer and Zynan, you will go to the White Forge to investigate for clues there, and Lumira, I hope you don't mind if I tag along with you to the Vermilion Library. Of course not. Excellent! Brother Goose, what about you? And Xiao Chong bends down and places their hands on top of their knees. Who would you like to go with? And Brother Goose looks up from grooming himself, looks between Lumira, looks between the boys, and then turns and waddles off towards Seir and Zainan. <laughs> ah, I see. Boy time! Huh. Find you some uh, good leaves on the way. Honk! Stay close, then. Uh, Seir doesn't really know how to interact with uh, little ah! Goose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the second time we have a goose with the boys, and he's still kind of like, Hi. Xiao Cheng pauses, glances at you, Sayer. You mentioned you were hungry? There's plenty of food where you're headed, lots of market stalls with non-perishables. Perfect. Say Sayer looks like he's heard that a lifeboat has been specially reserved for him. And there's a, a wave of relief that washes over his face. Uh, thank you, and it, it'd be okay if I took some? Oh, yes, of course. I doubt anyone will miss them, especially right now. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, and Xiao Chung kind of leans in and speaks so only Zaiden can hear them. Make sure Sayer doesn't get his teeth on Brother Goose. Absolutely. Thank you. And then they lean away, and they kind of tuck up next to Lumira, not touching you, but kind of whoop, standing right by your side. Excellent! Then, let's be on our way. Eyes up, Nova. See you tonight. Stay safe. Take care. Call us if you need anything. Lumira. This is so sweet. Lumira nods and turns. I'm following you. She turns to uh, Xiao Chung. I'm following Xiao you. Xiao Chung. Xiao Chung. Sorry, I didn't know who you were trusting. So sorry, I was just like standing there, like, huh? Okay, yeah, cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I'm sorry. <laughs> Xiao Chung nods and sweeps a deep bow to all three of you, then turns with a swish of the hem of their robe, and they set off out of the mouth of the Hall of Peerless Destiny toward the city of heaven that awaits for more investigation from Strike Team Nova. And on that, we're gonna take a break. So thank you all so much for tuning in so far. We hit our 1K goal. Uh, that's pretty spectacular, pretty amazing. We're over like 1100, which is incredible. Uh, we are gonna have a really special break scene now. There's gonna be the usual sponsor spiels, the usual fan art reel, I believe, but also some video tutorials for us all to take an action uh, during the break, uh, whether that's sending an email or calling up a representative if you live in the United States of America. So I encourage our cast to do that as well during break. We have the ability and any Anyone in chat who would like to take an action with us. There's like 60 something of us in chat right now. So I think if every one of us did something, that would be uh, pretty dope, I think. And if you're watching this VOD, VOD wise, it's never too late. Uh, so yes, we'll be back in about 10 minutes. Enjoy the break reel, take an action with us. And thank you all so much for donating. We'll be back so soon. Bijou, Bijou.